I have devoted my whole life, scientific life, to mathematics and physics and the interaction of the two. And I worked in uh, statistical mechanics mostly, but also condensed matter physics. Uh, and worked in many different areas within those fields. Well, mathematics and physics has uh, always been connected, sometimes strongly and sometimes not so strongly. When I came into the field uh, in the 50s and 60s, it was not so strong at that time. And uh, one of my goals was to try to increase, uh, encourage the interaction of mathematics and physics. I felt that uh, mathematics has a role to play in physics and conversely. Well, some of the things that I do, not all, but a good many of the things are to try to prove mathematically, rigorously, and like a mathematician would, uh, some of the things or ideas or calculations that are done in physics make sure that they are, uh, follow from decent mathematical reasoning and not just uh, intuition. Well, the starting point for matter is electrons and nuclei of atoms, uh, and <clears throat> like protons. And uh, why this whole collection of things, electrons and nuclei, which attract each other, is uh, stable instead of just collapsing together, uh, attracting so strongly that it just becomes nothing, so to speak. How all of these things uh, manage to coexist without falling into each other, but at the same time give rise to interesting structures. And that's what a good deal of my work has been about. My passion for mathematics and physics is something that uh, developed slowly over the years. Didn't just come all at once. Uh, when I was a youth, I wanted to, I got into uh, amateur radio, uh, building radios and transmitting and getting a license to transmit. And that was the proudest achievement of my youth, was getting a, a license. Because it, when I was very young, I was doing electronics with radio. I went to MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, with the idea to become an engineer. But I had a, my first physics course, a real physics course, was with a professor named Matthew Sands. Matthew Sands was one of the two people who wrote the famous Feynman lecture notes. With him, I started for the first time to really learn something about physics, the beauty of physics. It was an abstraction, abstract nature of physics. The abstract beauty of Newtonian mechanics, Newt's mechanics, from something that when I learned about it, it caught my attention and it will never let go. That there's a big structure to everything. Uh, although uh, superficially we don't necessarily see this structure, but it's there. So understanding this uh, structure physically and mathematically and how these two points of view uh, interact with each other is, uh, uh, be became a passion for me. It was so beautiful and abstract, and, but real, real, has to do with the real world. And listening to his lectures made me decide at a certain point that I wanted to be a physicist, not an engineer. And I told my father that I wanted to be a physicist instead of an engineer. And he said, well, you do, that's what you want to do, that's very fine, but you'll, you'll be poor. Because people had, they hadn't at that point really understood that, what, that physics was a profession. They knew about chemists, the people in general, but they didn't know about physics. Do I have advice? Uh, it's dangerous to give advice, <laughs> especially to young people. The world when I was a young person and the world now are rather different. 
in many ways. All I can tell you is some things that, there are some things that I have thought about for very many years. Uh, this, most people don't do that, but I've done several things like that where I've spent many years just in the, with some problem in the back of my head and eventually comes up, <laughs> comes out. <laughs>